yeah, I don't really know what happened either. I just kind of blacked out and this is what I woke up with, so... It's called boredom, <laughs> I suppose. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Amaya. So, today's video, I am sitting down here to film to prove to everybody that I don't just like Morphe palettes and I do wear colored eyeshadow. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So today's video, I am going to be talking about products that I just think were completely overhyped and maybe even still are completely overhyped. These are all products that I have tried too. These are not just products that I'm looking at and saying, nah, I don't need that, that's overhyped. No, these are all products that I have tried and I can tell you are overhyped and you don't need them. Maybe this will help you with your purchasing with your purchasing decisions or kind of just help you look at makeup in a more critical way in general. But yeah, I guess without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. Okay, so I was at work and one of the things at Ulta that we do is when we have extra products that don't fit on the displays, we put them in one of two spots. We either put them in the back room or we put them in these little like drawers, which we call bunkers. And I was organizing the bunkers. We were getting ready to do inventory and I needed to make sure they were all nice and organized. And I happened to stumble upon the drawer that we keep all the Essence products in. And I was going through and I kid you not, opened like 20 packages of Essence Lash Princess Mascaras and they were four packs between the display and this little drawer. We had like 75 Lash Princess mascaras. And I just remember organizing this drawer and looking at it and going, why? Why do people like this so much? Because I have been one of the very few people who has completely hated the Lash Princess mascara. And that's kind of how this video idea popped back into my head of something that I should be doing and talking about because I think the Lash Princess hype has escalated. Recently, I've had people asking me about like, have you heard about that $5 mascara? Have you tried it? The one that's all over TV and everything like that. And I can say yes, I have, and I hated it. So that's the first product on this list. And actually, dare I say, all Essence mascaras in general. I just do not like Essence mascaras. I don't know what it is. I have tried the Lash Princess mascara. I have tried the I Heart Extreme mascara, one of them, it's in the pink tube. I have tried their Lash Extension mascara that Tati Westbrook raved about, hated that. And then I also tried this other one. I have it right now. It's like something like the 24 hour super curl, something or another. I have disliked all of them. <laughs> I found the Lash Princess to just kind of be clumpy. I feel like it weighed my lashes down. I don't feel like it made my lashes look long or voluminous like everybody was saying. Everyone's saying it's like the Miracle Mascara, right? I just <laughs> never jived with this mascara. And the other Essence mascaras were the same thing. They just didn't do anything. I feel like everybody's talking about this. It's sold out on Amazon and it's on TV and in the news and I'm like, like, no? Dare I say that this is the high-end equivalent of the Lash Princess Mascara? I definitely think a little bit more famous, actually, than the Lash Princess Mascara, and that's the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Now, I know that in almost every single overhyped video, this mascara makes an appearance, and that should tell you something. When I start to think about this mascara, what I think this mascara really became popular for was the name. I think people were just really attracted to that brazen kind of outwardly sexual Too Faced aesthetic that they put forward. And I do think at a certain time, it really fit the aesthetic of what people were looking for in a mascara. It's a mascara that's gonna give you a lot of like clumpiness, um, a lot of volume, uh, but it's gonna look kind of dry, almost like lash extension unique type of lashes. And I think for a while that was really popular. I have used Better Than Sex mascara in the past and I haven't hated it. In fact, I thought it was okay, but is it? <laughs> No, we're not gonna go there. I think what annoys me about the Better Than Sex mascara is Too Faced just tries so hard to push this mascara. Like, they just recently came out with a collab with a bunch of different influencers who slapped their name and a design on the bottle, and it's really just the same mascara, just in a different bottle. Same thing when they did the diamonds, like the rhinestone ones. They just keep trying to sell this in a million different ways. Same shit, different packaging. That's all it is. Moving on from mascaras, I wanna talk about something that maybe a bit controversial. And I just wanna say, I do not think that the ColourPop Yes Please palette is worth the hype. I said it. And the thing is, this palette is totally me. It's warm tone, it's orange, it's neutral. The thing is, 
I like ColourPop's palettes and I think that they do have really nice really nice palettes for a decent price if you need a good neutral palette they have a couple cool colorful ones but in the end I don't think that ColourPop is as amazing as say uh, the eyeshadow that I'm wearing on my eyes right now is from Be Perfect Cosmetics or even Anastasia's formula I think that they do a really good job but I don't think they're as amazing one thing I don't like about ColourPop's palettes is I never feel like they put enough dark shades in there one, so that way people of darker skin tones can use it, and two, to deepen up the look at all. Like, I find that with ColourPop palettes, I have a hard time deepening up my look. So I don't know how people who are deeper than me are able to do it. And I can honestly say, I hardly reach for this palette. And the only time I do is out of, like, guilt, the fact that I have it and I don't use it. So ColourPop Yes Please palette, I think there are a lot of better, warm, toned, basic neutral palettes out there on the market. This one's fine but I don't understand why it was constantly sold out, honestly. Okay, speaking of eyeshadow palettes, um, yeah, Huda Beauty Desert Dusk. No. So I actually got this eyeshadow palette, I believe it was through BoxyCharm add-ons, I think. I don't know, I got this palette for a very discounted price and I thought the color scheme was interesting and I've wanted to try one of Huda's big palettes before because I do enjoy her little obsessions palettes. I have like three or four of them and I think that they're great. I love her formula. However, the Desert Dust palette just leaves me feeling kind of like meh. I found that it was kind of hard to create a cohesive look with all of the shadows. I just found the experience to be kind of meh. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I just, I didn't find myself being so excited over it to the point where I would understand why people love these palettes so much. The color scheme is fine, the shadows are fine, everything about it's fine. I'm so glad I didn't pay full price for it because I'd want my money back. I'd probably return it if I had paid full price for it, I'll be completely honest. Mm. Just left a lot to be desired for me. <sighs> NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer, I'm not gonna say a lot here. <laughs> I have never actually owned this product but I did have a sample of it and I've tried it and I can just say conclusively that it's not worth the hype. It's a very thick concealer. It's very full coverage and I found that it just looked heavy under my eyes and kind of creasy. I know that this is even still to this day is people's favorite concealer and I grew up you know on YouTube in the era of NARS Creamy Radiant where that was what everybody wore and if you didn't have NARS Creamy Radiant and custard then like what were you doing? Even if it wasn't your shade what were you doing? So this is like yes NARS Creamy Radiant but also high-end concealers in general. I I find myself being just kind of disappointed. This is not worth it to me and I feel like a lot of these products get hyped up because they're seen as like, ooh, this expensive, this cool product, like, oh, it's gonna be so good because it's higher end. And I think this product was really pushed in that time of like, oh, invest in your makeup products, especially your skin products, because you can kind of do whatever, but like your skin will look good. And it's like kind of treating makeup like skincare. And I think that we have come a long way, even in the past couple of years of having better quality makeup at cheaper prices to the point where you don't need to spend $30 on a concealer to have your skin look good. That's my opinion on it. Okay, another concealer, uh, the beloved Shape Tape Dupe, the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. I've never even owned Shape Tape, honestly. So I wasn't looking at this as a Shape Tape Dupe. I was kind of looking at it as, what is this concealer like? And at the time, I was still dancing. And one of the things, for any dancer, you'll know this, uh, your face, when it sweats, yeah, makeup doesn't like that. The Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define, when I was hearing about it, I was like, okay, that might be really, really good for when I need my makeup to last a really long time. I need it to be matte. You know, it won't be my everyday concealer, but I just need something, you know, need something there. I found that it was a little too dry for me, even when I wanted my makeup to last. You know, another thing too, I am not a fan of those big doe foot applicators. Some people love them. To me, it's just too big. I don't know if I have like small under eyes or something, but I don't like the really, really big doe foot applicators like on the e.l.f. concealers or like how Shape Tape has or the Conceal and Define concealer. This is one of those products that I didn't hate them, but I also didn't love them and I just don't think that it is worth the hype at all. If you're looking for something that's full coverage and more matte from the drugstore, I think it is a really good option. I think the e.l.f. Concealer is better. I know some people hate that one. I think that one's a lot better. I honestly I've tried the hydrating version I've tried the foundation of the hide like the hydrating version of the foundation and again It was fine And I think people really hype up this conceal and define line from makeup revolution because it kind of gives you that Image of being super full coverage and very similar to a lot of high-end products 
but I think that while they do it okay, I feel like makeup is kind of shifting in a different direction and the hype is definitely starting to show that maybe it wasn't exactly as good as everyone said, it was just the makeup trend at the time. So this is, <laughs> this product, I feel very strange about the fact that I don't like it because I don't know why, but this is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose powder. I never liked this powder. Even when I was like baking my face still, which I have not done in years, but when that was still a trend, I didn't like this. When I liked full coverage makeup, I didn't like this product. I just found that it really, really dried out my under eyes. I found that even though I got like a light shade, it just didn't look right. It was either too light or looked almost like weirdly dark. I don't know what it was. I have since decluttered this powder. Obviously makeup style is shifting a bit, but I feel like people still have a hard time letting go of their full coverage baking powders. And I think that Maybelline Fit Me is not exactly as like full coverage as say like a Laura Mercier or um, a Cody Airspun, but it's kind of that nice in between. Whereas I actually prefer something more like the Derma Blend HD powder. Something that's a little bit lighter, definitely more translucent, doesn't really have any coverage to it. Maybelline Fit Me does have some coverage to it. No, I don't think that the hype for this is deserved. I don't, I don't think that. I think it's a great price. I think it's a fine powder for the price, but I was severely disappointed. I can actually remember putting this on my face for the first time and being like, oh, damn, I really wanted to like this. Okay, so uh, speaking of complexion products, I wanna talk about another primer that I found that I kinda, I don't know, I coveted this primer for so long because everybody talked about it for the longest time. And even when makeup was still in a very like matte full coverage place, people still did talk about having hydrating primers and glowy primers. And I was really, really into that. I could not wait for the day that I could get my hands on this primer and that is the Too Faced Hangover Primer. And since then, I have discovered that it is a nice moisturizer that smells like coconuts and that pills on my face. <laughs> the thing about this product is that it doesn't inherently feel bad on the skin and it's not a bad product. I just don't understand why this was such a highly rated product. To me, it was difficult to work with. It pills no matter what moisturizer I am wearing underneath. If I'm not even wearing moisturizer, like it pills. It is so annoying. I find the smell to actually be very overwhelming. I love coconut smell, but the Too Faced Hangover products just are a little too pungent for me. I don't know. I don't love the smell of it, but I can get past that. I just find that it doesn't do that much hydrating to my face. I feel like primers like the ColourPop Hyaluronic Acid Primer or even the First Aid Beauty you know, Coconut Skin Smoothing Primer, which is very objectively very similar to the Too Faced Hangover Primer. I feel like those do a much better job at actually hydrating, but also creating a nice base for makeup. Normally this would be a primer that you would wanna reach for on a day when you're feeling like your skin's very dry. And I don't feel inclined to reach for that primer when my skin's feeling dry because it doesn't do a lot of hydrating. I don't know, I feel like maybe this was popular because there weren't a lot of hydrating primers. It was kind of all about the Benefit Professionals and the Smashbox Photo Finish Primers. So maybe this was kind of like the only hydrating one on the market, but I just feel like there's so many better ones. And honestly, use a good moisturizer. Hourglass, ambient lighting blush. Um, I, again, I got one of these, not for full price, and I love this blush, okay? I think it's beautiful. However, I paid $12 for it, and that's what I think it's worth. I do not think that these ambient lighting blushes are worth any more than $15. And that's why they are not worth the hype. Not because they're bad, they're fine. Beautiful blush, looks very glowy on the skin. I have the shade, I don't know, I'll put the one I have right here. Looks really nice on my skin. I like how it wears, it's fine. Is it a long wearing blush? No. Does it do anything extraordinary? No, it's a nice blush that I would think would be from a brand like, I don't know, ColourPop or any other low mid-range brand. Not Hourglass. <laughs> I do not understand Hourglass's pricing. I know that they kind of go for that very high-end aesthetic. These ambient lighting blushes, I would never, ever, 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 ever pay full price for them. And part of the reason why I even bought it in the first place was because I wanted to know if it was good. And because I was able to get it at a lower price, I had no issue trying it wasn't a product that I've wanted or like, oh, drooled over forever. 
And I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people look at this product as like, oh my God, like someday when I can afford this, I'm going to buy this product. Or they do that with the bronzers or the ambient lighting powders. You know, I feel like Hourglass is one of those brands that people kind of look at as like, oh, I want to buy that someday. And I never felt that way about them. Um, I was always curious, but I never was, you know, emotionally invested in them. And I can tell you from trying the blush, like I said, I wouldn't pay more than $15 for it. I would not. I do not think it's worth it. Okay, and then the last guy here, I actually want to take a minute and talk about this one. Um, these are the Stila Glitter and Glow eyeshadows. And I want to kind of make this a broader conversation about liquid eyeshadows in general. Okay, let's think about the hype that was the liquid eyeshadows, okay? And I know it's still kind of going on, it's definitely died down, but let's say like 2019, I feel like that was the big year for liquid eyeshadows. I fell into that hype. I bought so many liquid eyeshadows and I told myself like, oh, I'm gonna try all the liquid eyeshadows and then I can, you know, see which one's best. And I was kind of doing it as like a, I'm a makeup investigator type of, I, no, I was just a hoarder. <laughs> I was just buying into the hype and hoarding makeup. I saw liquid eyeshadows as, oh, this is gonna make my eyes look like shiny and like like a liquid was on it right but you think about that okay on your eyes which you're opening and closing all day long a lot of movement liquid doesn't stay good on movement and creasing and sweating and oil and when you think about that when you think about it that way you're like oh okay like this doesn't really make sense and I have found that I just do not like them and the seal glitter and glow specifically they dry out they dry out so fast and they're kind of messy. I personally thought that they dried weird on my eyes and kind of had like a cracky, like separated look. I feel like it would break up the eyeshadow underneath. I feel like it never meshed well with my other eyeshadow. I don't understand the hype of these and I still think these are very hyped. Like I see people talk about these all the time about these being their favorite eyeshadows. I, yeah, no, was not a fan. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed talking about some products that I personally think are just not worth the hype. Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I will see you in my next one. Bye.